In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the Publish Subscribe Design Pattern. In many programs, one object needs to know what happens to another object. One way to do this is to have the first object frequently check the second object and see the status of its properties. But there are two problems with that technique. First, the first object needs to check the second object frequently. This leads to a lot of duplicated code. Each method that affects the second object needs to check to see if the status has changed. And the second problem is, if a third object modifies the second object, the first object wouldn't know about the change to the second object. One way to avoid these problems is to use the Publish Subscribe Design Pattern. The first object can subscribe to an event on the second object. Then, whenever the second object changes, it can publish a message to anyone that's listening to it, in this case the first object, and it will publish this message no matter what caused the change. For this demonstration I'll use some classes from a pretend role-playing game. We'll have a game session object which manages how the user input works with the other objects. The game session object is going to watch the player object and it's going to care about if the player's hit points are zero or less, if the player has been killed. One of our objects is the player object, which will just have a hit points property. We'll have a location object, which has an atmosphere property, whether it's a normal atmosphere or a poisonous atmosphere that would cause damage to the player. And the game session object is the one that would connect to the user interface. This first example does not use the publish subscribe design pattern. So here in the constructor of the game session class, we create a new player with 10 hit points. The game session class has some functions here. One is for when a monster attacks the player, and this function will subtract some hit points from the player, and then it calls this other function, check if the player was killed. And this checks to see the hit points was less than or equal to zero, and it adds a message to the screen. We have another function here, move to location, and we set the current location to the new location, we check to see if the atmosphere is poisonous. If so, we subtract a hit point from the player, and we call the function again to check to see if the player was killed. Using this technique, any time we have a function that could potentially damage the player, decrease their hit points, we need to remember to call this check if player was killed function. And this is where the problem is. If we start adding more functions that do player damage, we need to always remember to call this check if player was killed function. And also using this pattern, if we have a multiplayer game, for example, and another player attacks this first player, it may not go through the game session class. So the game session class would never know that the player was killed. So let's look at the version that uses a publish subscribe design pattern. The location class looks the same but the player class has changed quite a bit. We've gone from having a single auto property for the hit points to having a hit points property that uses a backing variable. So when you get the hit points it actually gets it from the backing variable and when you set the hit points it saves the value to the private backing variable but then we also have our code in here that says if the hit points are less than or equal to zero we want to raise our event. And we have this new public event handler called player killed. We'll see how the game session uses that in a minute. But here when we set the hit points and it's less than zero, this new function on player killed says has anybody subscribed to the player killed event handler? This new one up here? If so, we're going to send a message. We're going to publish a notification that the player has been killed. So anyone subscribed to the player killed event handler will get a notification. And in the game session class, here's where we subscribe to the player killed event. After we've created the player, we say current player dot player killed. And this plus equal, this is the function that's going to handle the notifications in the game session. And this is a function we have down here that accepts an object, which is a sender, and in this case it's going to be the player object because the player object sent the notification, and it has the event args. 
which right now we're sending an empty event to args. We don't have anything special going on there. And the function in game session here displays the message, you were killed. Notice in the functions up here where the monster attacked the player and where we move the player to a new location, after we do damage, we don't have any code here that specifically checks if the player's hit points are less than zero. If we created a new game session object, it would create the current player object, save that, subscribe to the player killed event on the current player, and then later on, if a monster attacks the player, it, would, it might go through this function, subtract some hit points, and when it gets to the point where the hit points are less than zero, in the player object, when we set the value, it will say the hit points are less than zero, so we need to send out our notification. When this function is run, it's going to send a message to anybody subscribed to the player killed event, which was the game session object right here. And the game session object is going to receive the notification and know it needs to run this handle player killed function, which adds a message to the screen. The nice thing about this is the notification is managed inside the player object. So anytime anything ever changes the player's hit points, the player object is going to check and see if it needs to send out a notification. This makes it much easier to expand your program because if you have any other objects that in the future might care if the player gets killed, those objects just need to subscribe to the player killed event. You also have the ability to send some more information in the message, in the notification. In this sample, we're sending the second parameter event args.empty. We're not sending any additional information. We're just sending a notification that the player was killed. But you can create your own custom event arguments class and send a lot of additional information with that notification. And that's what we'll do in this third version. The first thing we'll do is create a custom event arguments class. This is the player killed event args. It inherits from the system event args. And we have a constructor here where we pass in the number of deaths and we set that to a property. In the new player class, we change the player killed event so that we have the type of event arguments that are going to be passed back. In order to keep track of the number of times that the player has died, we'll have this private variable, and any time the player's hit points are less than or equal to zero, we'll increment that number of deaths variable. And now when we call the onPlayerKilled function, we're going to pass a new player killed event args, our custom event args, with the number of deaths. In our game session class, we have this set up the same. The constructor creates a player and subscribes to the player killed event. But now the handle player killed function, the second parameter is our new custom event args. And we can get the property value of the number of deaths. So the way this would actually work when we instantiate a new game session object, it would instantiate the current player, subscribe to the player killed event. Whenever anything changes the player's hit points, if the hit points drop below zero, we'll increment the number of deaths private variable by one. The player object will call the on player killed function. It will instantiate a new player killed event args passing in the number of deaths, which in our event args here, it will take that parameter and save it to the number of deaths property on the event args. The player object will send this notification to anybody who's subscribed to it, which would be the game session class here. And when the game session receives that notification, this event args parameter will have the number of deaths, which the first time through will be one. If the player gets killed again, it will be two and it will keep increasing. So now we can display that in our messages. You can make the custom event args hold a lot more information. For example, in a game like this, if the player kills a monster, the player might receive some experience points, some gold, some loot items. So you would create a monster killed event args class and it would have properties, reward experience points, reward gold, maybe a list of reward items.
then your game session class would subscribe to the monster killed event on the monster object and it would have a function to handle that. You do need to be aware of possible problems in multi-threaded programs. If you're using C Sharp 6.0 and if you're raising events this way with the null conditional, then you're safe. If you're using older versions of C Sharp, I'll include a link in the description to a post that talks about different ways to handle this. One possible problem in the past was that an object could subscribe to an event and then it could later unsubscribe from that event. But if you are raising the event right as the object unsubscribed, then you might get some errors. But with the C Sharp 6.0, this null conditional, you don't have to worry about that. In the description below, I'll have a link to the support article with all the code samples. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment there or leave it on the video. Thanks.